Now, when you open STS, it will ask you for the workspace you want to you want to work with. Again, you can create a new, you can create a new workspace, or you can work with the same workspace which we which we were using for Eclipse. Ultimately, Spring STS or STS itself is Eclipse, right? Now you can verify that when you go to STS and if you click on about STS, you will get an option. You will get that this works on Eclipse platform, specifically Eclipse Neon 3, so the version which I'm working on. Maybe if you are using a new version, it will be having a latest version of Neon, or maybe Eclipse. Okay, so uh, the, if you remember, this is the project which we have worked earlier, right? Now, since uh, I have this project in Eclipse, I have worked on this uh, project in the existing workspace. I got this project here. Now, what I will do is I will create a new project. So, to create, create a new project, now this time we are going for a Spring project, okay? There's an option of Spring Boot in Spring. Uh, it's a new thing. Again, you can go with normal Spring MVC or you can go with Spring Boot. Now, just to make these things easy for you, I'm going for Spring Boot because Spring Boot says you don't have to do much of the configuration. In fact, if you're going for Spring MVC, there are lots of configuration which you have to take care. Spring Boot says, hey, don't worry. You can di directly start with the project. And the way you can do that is by saying new. So I click on your project explorer and say new and create a, oh, okay. So I'm not getting the option here. So I will right click, I will say, oh, can you see that? I'm not getting the option of Spring project here. So if I, if I see, I don't have a Spring project option. We are using STS, right? So we have to make sure that you are using a Spring perspective so if i click on here you can see we have a spring perspective you, you, have to, you have to click on that and say okay now you are in spring perspective now if you right click and if you say new and if you click on spring startup project now you can see we, have, we are getting an option of spring startup project now this is basically your spring boot project so if you click on spring startup project um okay it will give you the service you again we'll talk about this in a some in, in some time here I will mention my rest. I will mention my project name as Spring Boot Rest because this is not just a Rest project. This is a Spring Boot Rest project, and we'll mention the group group ID. Uh, we'll say com dot and we'll mention here com dot Okay, everything is set. Let's click on next. Now here we have to select web because we are working with web, right? So we'll select web and nothing else just click on next and then click on finish the moment you do that you can see we got a project now this is a spring boot project and you can also see s there s simply means a spring project and at the end you have boot this is a spring boot project if i expand this and if i go to my pom.xml file let's very let's see what exactly this file is if i go to pom.xml file you can see we have uh, we have spring boot dependency here and then we have Spring Boot Startup Starter Web. So this is a web project basically. This is a Spring Boot web project. You can also implement MVC here. Where we are going for Spring REST. Let's close this. And anything else? If I expand this main, if I expand Java com for example, if I open the Spring Boot REST app, you can see we have a main method here. And you can, if you run this code, it, this will this will work. Now one of the awesome thing about Spring Boot project is when you select web. And if you expand your Maven dependencies, of course, you will be getting the some web libraries there. But with those web libraries, as you can see, we have Spring MB we, have, we have Spring MVC here. With this, we have one important thing, which is this one. Can you see that? We have an option of Tomcat embedded. Now, what exactly it means? Let's say if you build a project on your machine and you, your machine, in your, in your machine, you have Eclipse, you have Tomcat installed, everything is set up. Let's say if you are going to your friend's house or if you have a different machine. Now, if you run this project on, on the other machine, what you have to do is you have to install Tomcat as well. You have to download Tomcat. You have to configure Tomcat. But Spring Boot says, hey, don't worry. Why you have, why we need an external Tomcat when I can give you embedded Tomcat? That simply means you don't need an external server. What I will do is I will stop the external server. You can delete this, delete this if you want. I will simply stop this. Now what I want is I want to create a okay I want to create a URL using which I can access some data. Now we have a choice of creating a web page here from which you can access data, but that's not a good thing, right? We are building a restful web service where you don't have to mention a page. 
we can request the data using postman so what i will do is i will first of all i will run this code and of course this will not work uh, this will work maybe let's try so i will say run as run as oh now how do you run this do we have to run this on server no this is our spring boot project right so whenever you want to run a spring boot project you have to select spring boot app just click on this now that's your spring boot app which is running and you can see in the console here it is running let me just minimize all this extra stuff which we never use anywhere and we got an error it says the port is already busy oh that's bad is it the issue yeah that's the issue because i already have my eclipse running in running state here let me close my eclipse and let me just make sure that this is ex uh, this is stopped or maybe i will delete this tomcat server from here to be on safe side anyway so i will right click again i will say run as run as spring boot app it should work now and you can see oh again we got an error what's wrong who is using the port number 8080 that's bad really bad okay so what i will do is this will not be an issue in your machine okay what i will do here is i will change my port number in case if you are facing the same issue you can change your port number you can just go to application.property file and you can say server dot port again uh, my intention here is not to teach you what is uh, what is spring boot and how to configure this stuff uh, you can learn that in a different course of spring projects right but then if you want to change your port number that's very easy just go to application properties and you can change your port number to 8081 now let's run this this should work now otherwise i will kill this project i will say run as run as spring boot app it's running oh finally it is started i don't know what uh, which service is using maybe the eclipse is not proper, uh, properly closed maybe this one is not properly closed so but th this is working you can see we are using a port number which is 8081 okay now what i will do is i will go to my postman i will say hey i want to request for 8081 and i will say enter we got nothing of course you will not get in the, you will get nothing right but what i want is i want to fetch all the aliens so I will say a get request, I will say I want to fetch all the aliens if I send a send request, if I click on the send request, it should return the data. Okay, now how do I do that? It's very easy. We just have to create a class and that class will re is responsible to return the data the way we have done in rest, uh, spring, uh, the rest jersey, right? I will mention this is my alien controller. Now technically this should not be a controller, this should be a resource, that makes more sense, right? This is a resource and click on enter. Now how do you mention that this is a spring project? I mean how do you mention that this is a spring a controller or a resource? Now to do that we have we just have to use an annotation which is called as REST controller. So whenever you want to implement RESTful API, you just have to annotate it with REST controller. The way we have done in uh, in Jersey, we have used add path. We have to use at rest controller here. In this, you just have to mention a method. So I will say method name is public. Uh, this return a list of aliens. Again, we can write database code, but that will do after some time. We'll say list of aliens, and I will I will say this is get aliens, and this will return a list. Now to return a list, we have to get a list first, right? So I will get a list of aliens here. I will say list of aliens and I will name this as aliens equal to new aliens but the problem is we don't have a alien class here that means first you have to create this alien class oh now I'm a bit lazy I will instead of creating the class I will just simply copy paste this again you can call it as code reuse right the same alien class let me paste it here now problem solved is it the problem solved yeah, problem solved. We, we, we don't have an issue with aliens now. And I will simply return the aliens. But unfortunately, this aliens is empty. So I will say alien. I will say alien A1 equal to new alien. And I will insert some data for this. I will say a1.set id. We'll mention the id as 101. I will say a1.set name. I will set the name as Naveen. And I will say a1.set points. I will set the points as 70. Okay, that's my points. Let me just use one more object. I will say copy this and create one, one more object for me. This will be A2, 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 A2 and this will 102. I will name this as Priya. Uh, let's say points is 80. Once I got these two objects, two alien objects, let me add that in, a, in that list. I will say aliens.add. 
let's add a1 I will say aliens dot add let's add a2 okay so we have added these two objects everything should work now now okay so for, before before running this code let's let's I have this question for you will this work uh, think about it and let's see the answer now so let's restart the application now there is one thing you have to uh, you have to remember when you work with Spring Boot don't start your project once again if you run this project once again it might give you an issue because Spring Boot project has a embedded Tomcat so it will not restart when you run this project you have to click on restart to restart the project or restart the Tomcat server let's go back to our postman and say hey postman send oh it's still not working of course it will not work because we forgot one of the annotation here which will map it right remember the path annotation there here we have to use request mapping because you are mapping with request right so we have to say request mapping and I will say request mapping with uh, slash aliens or oh, we don't even need slash there so I will say aliens so whenever you get a request for aliens this is what you have to run let's just start the application and let's go back to our Tomcat or oh, sorry postman and let's say run it worked can you see that we got JSON data we got your 101 the first alien we got the second alien as well it's so simple right so instead of using Jersey we can also use Spring Boot now the thing which you have observed here we have added no dependency nothing right in fact we got the data in a JSON format and that's an awesome thing for JSON we don't have to actually add any dependency everything is there but who is doing that? In in your in your jersey, we have jersey converters, right? Which is Moxie. Here, if you expand this Maven dependencies, you can see we have something called a Jackson. Now, Jackson is pre-built in, in in Spring REST project or Spring Web project. So this Jackson is just uh, Jackson is responsible to convert your list of objects into JSON, right? So it's an exciting tool to work with. Again, in the, in the subsequent tutorial, we'll talk about how do you use post request, put request, and edit request. So I hope you're enjoying it. Do click on the like button if you're enjoying it, and do subscribe for, for the videos. Thank you so much for watching.